Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have a humongous August book haul to share today. I don't know why I got so many books last month, but I did. I just have this huge stack of books and boxes right in front of me. So I do get to unbox some things for you guys. I also have my haul from Steamy Lit Con, which was in Anaheim last month. It was a lot of fun. It was like the first time that that convention ever happened and it went very smoothly and I'm super excited to go to next year's. But anyways, let me just show you guys all the new romances that I got, the new special editions that I got. I got quite a few special editions from Steamy Lit Con actually, but first off, let me just start with the arcs that I got. So I got this little stack of arcs right here. This one is a 2024 arc. It's called Not Bad for a Girl by Anastasia Ryan. It doesn't even have a cover yet on the arc, but it did come with a card that shows the actual cover. It says, from hilariously awkward lunch breaks to cringe-worthy Zoom calls, this workplace comedy of errors is sure to put a smile on your face. So it's at a workplace, the heroine gets transferred to this remote team, so she's working from home, and somehow her new co-workers think that she is a he. They think that she's a guy, so that when she is assertive at work, they praise her for it. Whereas before, when she was assertive, she literally got transferred to a different team. There does seem like there is a bit of a romance. It's with a handsome tech guy who is part of her new team, but it doesn't really sound like it's gonna be too romance heavy, just getting into the nitty gritty of being a woman in the workplace. And then I have this pink historical romance. It's the upcoming Amelie Howard. Never Met a Duke Like You is coming out in November. I believe this is part of the same series as Always Be My Duchess, which I still have not read yet. So in this one, we have a duke's daughter for a heroine. She is this self-professed matchmaker, and the hero is a duke who is trying to revive his family's fortune. They also happen to be neighbors. It's a friends to enemies to lovers romance, and it does sound pretty cute, especially because these two end up trapped together in an attic. And then I got this this amazing box from Red Tower Books. It came with this giant card. It says evil is hiring, great pay, excellent benefits, scary as hell boss, apply within. And then here is the box itself. I freaking love when publishers go all out when it comes to PR packages like this. I mean I already wanted to read the book before but having gotten this I am even more excited now because look at this. There's a pop-up frog. It says help. And then inside the box it says a very hostile takeover invading your bookshelf. August 29th. 2023. Do not listen to this frog. He's fine, I swear, mostly. And then below that it says the villain's guide to total villainy. One, get a super evil TM reputation. Two, practice your sinister laugh. Three, read Assistant to the Villain, this summer's Laugh Out Loud blockbuster book based on Hannah Mayer's viral TikTok series. Definitely don't open this. And inside is the arc of Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. It sounds like so much fun, such a fun fantasy paranormal romance. I feel like we don't get fantasy rom-coms enough, so I do love when we get a more comedic take on fantasy or paranormal romances. It's out already, but it's about a villain who is looking for an assistant. The heroine takes this job as an assistant and she develops a little bit of a crush on her evil boss. I do really want to read it soon. I've heard mixed things on this book, but honestly it just sounds so fun, so hopefully I'll get to it soon. Oh, I also forgot. I have this box of arcs that are all, or at least mostly, holiday romances here. Here we have Along Came Holly by Cody Hall. The heroine runs a holiday shop in their small town. The hero is a grump who owns the hardware store next to hers. They end up in a prank war with each other. I got this one, Paradise for Christmas by Carolyn Brown. The heroine is a writer who is dealing with writer's block, so she decides to go back to her hometown to be with her sisters, her six sisters. They're all super into decorating for Christmas and they also hired some very handsome men to help them out. Another Christmas romance here is The Trouble with Tinsel by Juliet Giglio and Keith Giglio. It's a second chance romance between two screenwriters who used to work together as a team. Now a few years after they've broken up, one of their old scripts gets greenlit into becoming a movie. So 
now for the holidays they have to return back to Hollywood to work on this film and also pretend that they are back together. And this last holiday arc is the holiday mix-up by Ginny Baird. It sounds like a total soap opera. The heroine is a waitress who has a crush on one of her diners. He asks her to be his fake girlfriend for the holidays except right before the holidays he ends up in an accident and in a coma. So now she has to still go along with being his fake girlfriend all while she falls for his brother. So it sounds very very messy but also kind of hilarious. So those were the few arcs that I got but I got a bunch of new finished copies, new romances to add to my shelves. My <laughs> overflowing shelves. First off, a look at this new edition of Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. It is pretty similar to the original indie edition, but this one is a new publisher edition. It changed the background to black and there's also this non-removable sticker that says bonus material. It's technically not new bonus material, like if you've followed Penelope Douglas and you've seen their bonus stuff on their website, then you probably have already read it. It's the Birthday Girl bonus Halloween scene. It's also super floppy, so if you love reading floppy books, this is a good addition. It makes it easier to open the book, but I mean, I've already read it, so I don't really need that. And then this is Unrealistic Expectations by Andy J. Christopher. It's about a relationship therapist who gets dumped right before her new dating handbook goes on sale. And to save face, she fake dates her old crush. The funny thing is that the reason why the hero goes along with this fake dating scheme is that his ex went on social media to talk about how he wasn't that great in bed so this is gonna be a little PR boost for him too. And then I got this historical romance. It's got this illustrated cover, another illustrated trade paperback historical. It's My Rogue to Ruin by Erica Ridley. It's part of the Wild Winchester series. It's like book four, I think. This is a family who has some experience when it comes to heists, but instead of them trying to steal something, this time someone needs their help with trying to figure out who is passing off these counterfeit items. And the number one suspect here is the hero. And then this one is a sapphic paranormal romance, a sapphic witchy romance. It's This Spells Disaster by Tori and Martin. I really love this cover. I think the artwork is so cute. But this is by a new to me author. I haven't heard of her before, but we do have some fake dating here in this witchy romance. The heroine, one of the heroines, she gets to fake date the woman of her dreams only to figure out a little bit later that she might have accidentally given the woman of her dreams a love potion, which apparently is a big no-no when it comes to witchy laws. So she tries to break this love potion, all the while actually falling in love with each other. And then this one is Witch of Wild Things by Raquel Vasquez Jillyland. It's another sort of paranormal romance. The heroine and her family, they have some sort of magic in them. The heroine, interestingly enough, has this ability to communicate with plants. And there's also a second chance romance with a high school sweetheart who broke her Heart back then. They are forced to work together though in some botany sleuthing, trying to find some rare plants. And then some holiday romances have started arriving. I got some Christmas, winter holiday romances here. This first one is Unleashed Holiday by Victoria Shod. This author seems to always write books, write romances with a lot of dogs in them, which I can always appreciate. It's a rivals to lovers romance and the heroine is a dog trainer. Her old nemesis shows up as her new office neighbor. They're both competing for this vacant space to expand their businesses, but then something happens where the hero's dog leaves the heroine's wrist broken. So they make a deal where he'll help her rehab her wrist and she'll help train his dog. So very dog-friendly romance, and of course this all happens over the holidays. This next one is Faking Christmas by Carrie Winfrey. This one is yet another fake relationship romance, except it goes a little bit further than just fake dating. We have fake husband and wife here and possibly some fake kids too. The heroine for some reason thought it was a good idea to pretend to her boss that she owns this farm and of course he ends up inviting himself for a Christmas Eve Eve dinner there. So she has to pretend to be the owner of this farm which she is not and when she shows up at that farm her old nemesis is there. So she and her nemesis have to pretend to be a fake husband and wife when her 
boss shows up. Uh, but of course, in classic Christmas romance fashion, they get trapped in a snowstorm together. And then I have The Xmas Holidays by Zoe Allison here. It's a second chance romance set during Christmas in the Scottish Highlands. The hero is a ski instructor, but he also has a side job serving drinks naked. So that sounds interesting. But yes, this is a second chance romance during the holidays. And I do love the fact that it's set in Scotland. I got Codename Charming by Lucy Parker here. It's the follow-up to Battle Royal, which I thought it was okay. I didn't like love it, but it was still cute. This one is yet another fake dating romance. We have so many out this year, but it's between a grumpy royal bodyguard and the charming sunny royal assistant. So it's a grumpy sunshine bodyguard romance, but these two have to fake date because these photos came up where it seemed like the heroine was involved with her boss. So they want to quell those rumors by getting the assistant and the bodyguard together. And then this one is The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. It's about two hotel receptionists and arch rivals who find a collection of old wedding rings and compete to return them to their owners, discovering their own love story along the way. So that actually sounds really interesting, very unique, but I have struggled with Beth O'Leary's books. I just don't really love them. But this one does sound interesting enough that I do want to give it a try. And then, oh my goodness, we have the new publisher edition of Paper Princess by Erin Watt. This is the first book in the Royal series, which was such a hit years ago. It was this big, noodle, slightly bully romance that I was obsessed with. The heroine is an orphan who gets taken in by the very wealthy royal family, and she falls for one of the sons of that family, who is basically her bully. This is set in high school, but it is very, very new adult. I didn't realize that this book, the series, blew up again. I mean, I knew this got picked up by a publisher, but I hadn't really seen anyone talking about it since it first came out. So I'm honestly very surprised that it did get picked up by a publisher, but maybe it got revived on Book Talk, and I just didn't know because I'm not on there. And then I also got the new publisher edition of Addicted After All by Kristen Becca Ritchie. This one is one thick book. Also pretty floppy. A lot of Berkeley romances recently have gotten very floppy. This is the seventh book in the Addicted series. This is Lillian Lowe's final book. It's one of my absolute favorites of the series. I love Lillian Lowe so, so much. They will always have a special place in my heart. And we do have some bonus scenes in here. Uh, the first one is Lily's 24th birthday questionnaire. Then, ooh, okay, this bonus scene is Rose's 26th birthday at Cobalt Diamonds. And another birthday one, Reich Meadows 26th birthday interview. Okay, well, if you thought that first stack was it, I do have another stack of books that I got from publishers. First off, I got this lovely package of The Long Game by Elena Armas, plus some goodies. I got this really um, big bracelet. It says The Long Game. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it's so big, why they made it like this, but... I mean, it's cute. It came with a bunch of cards and stickers that are super adorable. Here's a card with the book playlist. And then this one says, back off, I'm reading. And the other side says, only approach with snacks. And then of course, the book itself. Here is the pretty finished copy of The Long Game by Elena Armas. It's a soccer romance. It's also my book club's read for September. It's the Ravished by Romance September book club read if you want to join us. It's about a heroine who gets sent away to the middle of nowhere to help out this little girl's soccer team. And the hero is their coach, who is also a former professional soccer player. I got a copy of the new Sarah McLean historical romance. This is Knockout. It's the third and latest book in the Hell's Bell series, which I do still need to continue with. I read the first one. I wasn't the biggest fan, so I haven't been really excited to read more. Here is the cover, and then we have a clinch on the back cover. It's pretty much a bodyguard historical romance. I got The Burning by Anna Todd. It's book two in the Brightest Stars trilogy. It follows the same couple and it sounds like they broke up at the end of book one. I also got quite a few books, new books from Bloom Books here. This one is the new edition of Flawless by Elsie Silver. We don't have the pretty couple covers anymore. Those were so, so nice. These new covers have the UK illustrations with the flowers on them, which is okay. I just thought it was an interesting choice to have the title like this because 
it almost looks like it gets cut off on the right here. But this is book one in the Chestnut Spring series. The whole series did get picked up by the publisher. I did really like Flawless though. I've only read the first two books. I liked Flawless. Heartless was even better and I still have the rest of the series to catch up on. But if you love cowboy, rancher, romances, then the series is gonna be for you. And then here we have the new edition of Pretty Reckless by LJ Shen. It came with this card of some notes from the book. I think I like this one. Back when I read it, years ago. I read the whole series. The only one that I did not like was the third one. But it's a new adult high school romance between two classmates who also become housemates. And then this is King of Pride by Anna Huang. This is the new Bloom version, the Bloom edition. It's basically the same as the indie. It does have the purple spine, but it just has the Bloom logo at the bottom here. I adored this book so much. I love Kai to death. Kai and Isabella's romance was really, really sweet. It also came with this hilarious card of a mock-up book that's like an inside joke between Isabella and Kai. It's a Raptor Ripped My Bodice by Wilma Pebbles, which is the dinosaur erotica that they joke about in King of Pride. And it also came with a Valhalla Club card, but club is <laughs> misspelled. It's Koob here. I also got Longshot by Kennedy Ryan and it came with this beautiful page overlay of Iris and August here. It is so freaking adorable. I love it so much, but it is a little bit for this paperback because it does stick out as you can see but it might fit better in the um, bigger indie version paperback so I'll probably put that in there. If you haven't read the hoop series though this is book one in the hoop series you need to do that ASAP. It is such an incredible series. I mean I love everything Kennedy Ryan writes but the series is very special. If you love sports romances, I highly recommend it. It's about basketball players, although book two is more about sports agents, but still, it's very much sports related. And then the last Bloom book that I have is Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. This is the new edition of Lotus with the lotus flower on the cover. This is one of the times when it's you know it makes sense to have a flower on the cover here. I have not read this one yet though. I've only read one book from Jennifer Hartman. I read Still Beating which is her biggest one but I do believe Lotus is related to Still Beating. Like they talk about the hero in this one in Still Beating. So I do eventually want to read it. The hero, he was kidnapped as a little boy. He's found, he's returned 22 years later, and the heroine is his old best friend. And then I have a couple more romances here. This one is Curves for Days by Laura Mower. It's about a curvy heroine who moves into this new town and she wants to fix up her new house. The hero is a contractor who everyone recommends that she hire. He is a big grump and he seems to hate her for some reason. And then this one is a YA romance from Maisie Eddings. It's Tilly in Technicolor. It's about a heroine who has ADHD, a hero who has autism, and they are forced to spend their summer together interning in Europe. Here are also a couple of non-romances that I got from some publishers. First off, I am so excited to get the new J.D. Robb, the new in-depth book, Payback in Death. I absolutely adore the series, but I am majorly behind. I don't even know how many books are in the series right now, like 50 something. I haven't even made it to 10 yet. I'm still on book seven or eight. But look, at the other side of this dust jacket. It's an actual game, like you read this part and then you look at the photos here to find out who the killer is. This is so cute and so fun. I don't think I've ever noticed uh, the other books in the series having this. This might be the first one to have this alternate side of the dust jacket. But yes, this is a mystery series. Each book has its own different mystery. I don't know how J.D. Robb, Nora Roberts has been doing this for so long and is still going after 50 books, but yes, I do love Even Rourke so much. They're one of my all-time favorite couples, so I do really need to catch up on the series. I don't know when that'll ever happen, if it'll ever happen, but I do at least want to. Here is another mystery, Murder and Mamon by Mia P. Manansala. At the grand opening of the heroine's aunt's new laundromat, a murder happens. So now she's trying to catch a killer. And then the last of the books that I got from a publisher, this is Sunshine Nails by Mai Nguyen. It's about 
about a Vietnamese family who owns a nail salon, but unfortunately for them, a new chain nail salon has opened up right across the street from them. So the family has to all work together in order to not just save the family salon, but also save their family. I also got some packages and books from some indie authors and their publicists. First off here is Red Flags by Sky Warren and it came with these, these animal crackers that are just completely crushed up from USPS. But the whole animal crackers thing is because it's about a circus. The hero is the owner of the circus that comes into town. The heroine decides to join them as a fortune teller. But there is something fishy going on because he wants to protect her not just from himself but also the other performers. And then I got Hideaway Heart by Melanie Harlow. It's a celebrity romance. The heroine is this pop country music star. Her family hires her a bodyguard because the paparazzi have been going a little crazy over her so she's stuck in a cabin in the middle of nowhere with this new bodyguard. I also got this box for the teas by Lauren Blakely. I haven't even opened it up yet so I don't know what's inside. Ooh, okay it is so pretty in here. So first off the box says beg for it. The teas candle from the Bright Side Candles. It's honeysuckle and lilac scented. Here are a bunch of stickers. This one says the tease. I like my men written by Lauren Blakely and beg for it. Here is a card with the book aesthetic and then on the back it's got the blurb and some tropes. Dad's Best Friend, Sex Club, Atria, Forbidden, Single Dad, and Pleasure Dom. It sounds very different from the typical Lauren Blakely book. Like she more writes rom-coms and this does not seem like one. Here is a little chain bracelet, a blindfold here, and of course the book itself, The Tease by Lauren Blakely. And just like the tropes say, it's about a heroine who goes to this masquerade and kisses her dad's best friend. And then the most amazing box came from Kristen Becca Ritchie. This is their Addicted to You 10th anniversary box because it's been 10 years since Addicted to You first came out, which is so crazy. So here is the inside of this beautiful box. We have an Addicted to You 10th anniversary tote, a book plate signed by Lauren and Lily with some notes from them. Here are some cute little sticky notes, an Addicted series koozie, a bookmark with a quote from Addicted to You. Here's a little keychain. It says one day at a time, an adorable superheroes and scones cup. It says channel your inner superhero. And then of course a copy of the new edition of Addicted to you by Kristen Becca Ritchie. This is the book that started it all, that started the Addicted series. It's Lily and Lowe's first book. This was my first book from Kristen Becca Ritchie and the one that made me fall in love with everything that they write. So I am so so happy to have this. This box was amazing. And then for some books that I bought for myself, I got quite a few new things here. First off, I had to get myself the new Stacey Reed historical romance. This is An Earl to Remember. It's the sequel to A Matter of Temptation and it's also inspired by the movie Overboard, which I will say I haven't watched, but it sounds amazing. It's about a heroine who gets fired and she finds the perfect opportunity for revenge against her former boss because he fell overboard off of his ship and when he gets fished out he has amnesia. He doesn't know who he is. The heroine is there though and she tells him that she is his wife. It sounds like so much fun. I love the idea of it and I really really hope I love it but yeah I had to get this one. It's also got the gorgeous clinch cover here. I love Stacey Reed for still having clinch covers on her historical romances. I also got book two in the Haiti series by Tay James. This one is Anarchy. I have been slowly collecting all the Tay James books to add to my shelves and I wasn't really gonna do Hades but then I heard that Bloom was gonna pick this series up along with Madison Kate but I already had Madison Kate so now I'm slowly collecting the Haiti series. I do love the series though. It's another reverse harem why choose series from Tay James. We have one heroine, three heroes. It gets dark and gritty, but it's so, so good. Another book that I got because the series got picked up by a publisher. This is Kill Switch by Penelope Douglas. This is not the original edition. This is actually the second indie edition, but I am slowly collecting these white covers. I think I have 
two more books left to buy in the series. This one is Damon's book, the best one in the series. If you have not read the Devil's Night series yet, um, what are you doing first of all? And second, please read it immediately because it's one of my favorite dark romance series. I also got one of my favorite reads of 2023. This one is Liars Like Us by JT Geisinger. I had to get myself a copy because of how much I love this book so much. It's a dark romance but it is hilarious. It is so entertaining. We have a marriage of convenience, an obsessed hero, everything that I love in a book. I ordered myself the Barnes & Noble edition of King of Pride by Anna Huang. This is like the exclusive edition with the cover variant. It's got like a slightly purple tone to it compared to the original white. I also got Unlucky Like Us by Kristen Becker Ritchie. This is their newest book, the latest book in the Leica series. It's Luna and Donnelly's second book, but um, I don't know if you can tell, but the edition that I got is the matte cover one, which was not what I wanted because the rest of the series is all glossy. So this one is going to be the odd one out. I might have to return it and try to order another one from Amazon. I always get so annoyed because when I want to glossy, I get matte. And when I want matte, I get glossy. I have not read this one yet though. I only read Misfits Like Us, which I adored. I love Luna and Donnelly so, so much. And I'm so excited to read more of them. I think their romance is going to be a trilogy. So we still do have another book left for them. I'm not sure I want to wait until the third one is out, so we'll see when I get to this one. And now it's time for my Steamy LitCon haul. These are all the books that I either pre-ordered or picked up and bought at the signing. I have a ton of books, mostly special editions, so let's just jump into it. Um, this entire tote bag is full of books that I got. This first one is one of the few books that I did pre-order for the signing to pick up. It's the special edition of Three Little Mistakes by Nikki Sloan. I got it because it was so so cheap. It was only 10 bucks and I think it was all for charity anyway. I honestly don't remember if I've read this one. I read most of the series but I'm still happy to have this. The hero here is the owner. So I think I read this one. It sounds familiar. And then this one was one of the freebies that I got in the swag bag. It's the new edition of King of Wrath by Anna Huang. It's from Bloom, but the Bloom edition that I have is the one with the white spine. So I am super happy to add this to my Kings of Sin collection. I think I have seven, six, seven copies of the series now, and there's only two books out so far. I got this one at Amelie Howard's table. Amelie is always so much fun to see, and she was so nice to give me an arc of Any Duke in a Storm, which is the next book in her Daring Duke series, which is so, so good. I loved book three so much. It was one of my favorite reads from last year, and in this fourth book, we have another main character who is a spy, and she has been on a covert mission posing as a captain of a smuggling ship for the past two years. The hero is her ship's new sailing master and they do set sail together. One of my other pre-orders is this special edition of Tis the Season for Revenge by Morgan Elizabeth. This was one of my favorite reads from last year. It's a holiday romance. It's about a heroine who gets revenge on her ex by dating his boss. It was so, so good, so I had to get myself a copy. I mean, look at all the pink foiling here. It looks so, so nice. I also got this freebie from Sierra Simone at her table. It's a novella. It's called Salt in the Wound, which is part of her new upcoming trilogy, the Lioness trilogy. It's a prequel. The trilogy is an MMF romance. It's based off of the story of Tristan and Isolde. So this one is the prequel to that story and um, if you ever see Sierra Simone at any book signings, she'll have these out for free. My friends from Hello Lovely Box gave me this special edition trilogy. It's the special editions of the Sick Boys trilogy by Lucy Smoke. I have never read it. It's a dark romance series, but I do love how pretty these are. So book one is Pretty Little Savage and you can see all the foiling on it. Book two is Stone Cold Queen and I'm not gonna lie, I mostly wanted these books because of all the foiling. And then book three is Natural Born Killers. So it's a new adult college dark romance. It sounds kind of like it's a bully romance, but the author says it's not. It's about these sick boys at the Heroines University. They rule the school, uh, but it is not Reverse Hero. She only ends up with 
one of them. And then I got this beautiful edition of Real by Kennedy Ryan. I have been wanting to get myself a copy of this for so so long because of how much I love this book. It's like this director actress romance and you can see some gold foiling on the movie tape roll on the front and back cover. I also had to get some more Kennedy Ryan special editions. This was another pre-order that I got the special editions of the Grip series which is so so good oh my gosh I love everything Kennedy Ryan so I couldn't not get these so here is the prequel novella flow you can see grip and Bristol on it and then the first full-length book is grip which is an angsty mess of a book and then the final book is still which is their wedding as you can see from this cover and this one is my absolute favorite from Kennedy Ryan it made me sob tears of joy it was so so beautiful I love this book so much. I also got a special edition of Unconditional by QB Tyler. This one I have not read yet, but it looks very, very pretty with all the pink and the ballerina on the cover. It's some sort of taboo forbidden romance. I mean, it is QB Tyler after all. I also managed to win a copy of this Christmas holiday anthology. It's Christmas in August, a holiday romance anthology. It's got July crossed out because the signing, the book signing happened in August. So it's got this adorable holiday cover. You can see the gold foiling on it and the authors are on the back. We have Aurora Page, Chelsea M. Cameron, Hannah Bonham Young, Jenica Snow, Nikki Sloan, Nyla Kay, Sierra Simone, and Tara DeWitt. I do love a good anthology. The ones that I would be most most interested in reading are the ones from Nikki Sloan and Sierra Simone. Although I think that Sierra Simone one I already read. It's her Folgers commercial inspired holiday novella. I actually read it last Christmas in my holiday romance reads video and that was very interesting. And then the final book that I got from Steamy Lake Han was another special edition. This is Wildest Dreams by Gianna Darling. It's a bind up of the Dark Dreams duet and it is so so pretty. I haven't read the books though but I do actually own the original paperbacks so I do eventually want to read them. Also in the swag bag and everyone's swag swag bag was a vibe. This is from Satisfier and it's called Threesome 4. It's a three pronged vibe that honestly had me shook the first time that I saw it. I'm still a little scared to do anything with it. And then finally onto all of the special editions that I got last month. These are all the books that I either bought or traded for. Um, so there's a lot here. These are just a few of the packages that I have. I left some unopened so this is gonna be my first time seeing these in person. Okay so this white box here is from Faye Cray and it's my Laura Thalassa special editions, her Fallen World special editions. I absolutely love the series. I mean I would buy anything Laura Thalassa in general but I had to get these because these were one of the first books that I read from Laura and I love them. They're one of her older series and we do have a very anti-hero hero here. It's in this gorgeous box set. Let me take off the plastic wrap. Okay so here is the beautiful slipcase for the Fallen World trilogy. The artwork looks so nice. I was so happy when I saw like the reveals on their Instagram. So here are the three books. Oh my gosh this artwork is stunning. So book one is The Queen of All That Dies. They're underwater here. You can see the blue sprayed edges. And then book two is The Queen of Traitors. This one has a beautiful gold dress. Oh my goodness. And then these are some more of the blue sprayed edges. And the third and final book in the trilogy is The Queen of All That Lives. This one might be my favorite cover of the three. And also here is a look at those sprayed edges and these are what the edges look like all together. I just love how these turned out. I am so, so happy that I got them. I just have so many Laura Thalassa special editions now, but I'm not mad about it. And then I have some Hello Lovely Box goodies. So this first one, the smaller one, is the Trope of the Month box. The trope for August was Why Choose? And here is the surprise book. It's a special edition of Syndicate of Sins by Marie Maravilla. It's some sort of mafia, why choose, reverse harem romance. And the three heroes are part of this group called the Syndicate and they want to take over the mafia. It does sound good. I've never read this. I've never read this author before, but it has been a while since the last time I read 
a mafia romance. And then for this bigger box from Hello Lovely Box, this is their bouquet box, their seasonal bouquet box. This one featured Elsie Silver plus two mystery authors. And look at this cute little mason jar that came in it. Here's some chapstick, that small town love, Shirley Temple, a wooden bookmark that says, let me read in peace, a cute little small town sticker, and this amazing little character art card. Okay, so here are the three special edition books that came in the box. First off, of course, is the Elsie Silver book. It's this beautiful special edition of Flawless. I know I'm not the biggest illustrated cover fan, but this is a type of illustrated cover that I absolutely adore because it has so much character and life to it. I just don't like the ones that are so flat and 2D that barely have any faces. But this one is so cute and I love that it's basically the illustrated version of the original couple cover. And I'm really really hoping that Hello Lovely Box finishes up the rest of the Chestnut Spring series with these gorgeous covers. The other book in this box is Mine to Have by Natasha Madison. It's part of her Southern Wedding series. It's another small town romance series but I have not read this one. And the third small town romance special edition is Grim Prince by Inez Johnson. So it's a very small town romance focused box because of Elsie Silver who is the main featured author. Oh I just noticed there's also a step back in this special edition of Flawless. It's got the art print that I showed earlier. And then this special edition is one of my favorite reads of 2023. It's a special edition that the authors themselves did. It's for My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. It's this hardcover in a beautiful slipcase with all this gold and red foiling. It says Mr. and Mrs. Costa with a quote on the other side. Here is the beautiful hardcover. It's got the original cover but with this beautiful red foiling on it. Obviously I am a sucker for foiling but here are the sprayed edges too which are stunning. And then these are what the end papers look like. There's also some red foiling where the blurb is on the side of the dust jacket. And then the naked hardcover cover is even prettier with all this gold foiling on the red case. I'm just so in love with how this turned out. It is pretty decadent, like all this foiling. I'm obsessed. And then I got a special edition of one of my absolute favorite books, which is Bitter Heat by Mia Knight. The special edition is so, so stunning. I love the artwork on the cover. I love the embossed foiling for the title and the author name. It's so perfect. I love it so much. And again, it's one of my all-time favorite books. It's a second chance romance between a formerly married couple and they enter a marriage of convenience. It also came with some very not safe for work artwork that I can't show on YouTube and some beautiful character art tarot cards. So this one is a tarot card of Jasmine, the heroine, and this other one is artwork of Roth, the hero, who is very psychotic and obsessed with Jasmine. I also surprisingly got two things from the bookish box, two special editions from them. They're still trying to catch up on everything. They haven't yet, but I got my gorgeous special edition of Cupidity by Raven Kennedy. This one honestly wasn't too long of a wait, but I absolutely love how it turned out. The cover is so pretty. I love all the rose gold foiling, and it's a huge, huge book because it's a whole series in one hardcover in one omnibus. You can see the gorgeous sprayed edges which really work well with such a thick book and also there are some pretty end papers here. It's a why choose reverse harem fantasy romance so we have all four guys as the end papers. I haven't even read the series yet but I couldn't pass up on getting it. I am so happy that I got it and hopefully I end up loving the series because if not that would suck. And then the other special edition that I got is this beautiful copy of Blood Orange by Karina Halley. This is the first book in the Dracula duet and it's got all this pretty orange foiling, the orange sprayed edges which are so amazing. I really like this book. It's a paranormal romance obviously, vampire romance. We have these pretty orange end papers here. This is what the naked hardcover looks like. I love the look of the white with the orange foiling. And then here is the other side of the dust jacket which I do prefer more. And then the last special editions that I have in this book haul, these are the ones that I actually traded for. So I did not have to spend any money, thank god, because you guys, all of this is 
so expensive. Okay, so first up, I managed to get myself these beautiful dust jackets of the A Court of Thrones and Roses series by Sarah J Mass. These were from Illumicrate a long time ago, but I finally managed to get them and I love them so much. So book one is A Court of Thrones and Roses. You can see Hamlin, Feyre, and Lucian on it. Book two, A Court of Mist and Fury with Feyre and Reese on the cover and all this beautiful foiling. And then book three, A Court of Wings and Ruin. This has more Amryn, Asriel, and Cassian. Next is the novella, A Court of Frost and Starlight. It's got Feyre, Elaine, and Nesta, the three sisters. And the last one is A Court of Silver Flames, which is Nesta and Cassian's book. This one is so thick but I just love this artist so so much and I'm so glad that I found these dust jackets especially now that the series covers have changed and I am just not a fan of them. Another book that I traded for is this beautiful edition of In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. I had to have this one because it's one of my absolute favorites of this year. So here is what the back cover looks like. These are the beautiful sprayed edges. TJ Klune always gets the best sprayed edges. I mean, you can see my collection right here on my shelves. But this one is so stunning. You can see the gold foiling here and also the end papers. They are so beautiful, like the colors here. And then you can see the robots and the characters. And then this is what the naked hardcover looks like. It's got this beautiful gold stamp. I also managed to get this special edition of The Deception Duet by Kay Webster, which is one of my favorites from Kay Webster. I love this Reverse Harem Wide Shoes series. It's a wild duet. It's a reverse harem wide shoes between the heroine and three identical triplets. I mean, only Kay Webster, right? But it was so good. And then finally, to round out this book haul, this is the final book in this haul, the last special edition that I got last month, which is this beautiful hardcover of the Sweet Addiction series by Jay Daniels. It's got such an adorable cover with this purple foiling, all the little cakes on it. It's so pretty. And then these are what the end papers look like. It's a bind up of the three books in the series and each one has its own little page overlay. Doesn't it look so, so nice? But I also love the fact that this hardcover has colored pages inside. Like this is how the chapter heading looks. It's amazing. And that's it for my book haul for August. This were all the books that I got last month. So let me know what you think of my beautiful new editions, all these special editions, all of my new romances. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time. Bye.